Hey guys, welcome back. This is the third and final amplifier power retest. Like I said, I was going to test the amplifiers that I thought were the best that I've tested so far. Now that I have a good power supply, I'm able to get some better power measurements. And the power supply and my little preamp there have been a great addition to really help me get these things tested much more easier. So yeah, this is the LM1875. It's a single channel board. It comes into a kit that you must assemble. Here is the unassembled kit. I should be able to find them for two to four dollars. And like I said before, the board was really well laid out. It's an excellent little kit. Okay, I'm going to hook it up now and see if we can get some measurements. Okay, I'm going to take a bunch of measurements at different output impedances. I'll try 2 ohms, 4 ohms, and 8 ohms. Right now I have the 4 ohm load hooked up. And we'll see what we get here. Okay, I have the supply set for series mode so I can get a plus and minus output voltage. So we have 40 volts up now. And that would be plus and minus 20 volts. Okay, let's see what we get here. Hello, there we go. And we're getting 11.2 volts. And you can see that little node there is just my built-in 1% pilot signal. There is no other distortion. Let's turn this off so you can see it. Yeah, you know, that's nice and pure. I probably should turn that up a bit. There you go. Yeah, it's, it's uh, very clean looking. Let's see what that is. Okay, we had 11.2 volts RMS. Square that, divide it by the load impedance of 4 ohms. 31.36 watts. Hey, that is very good. Not bad at all. Let's take a quick look at distortion. Well, you kind of already seen it, but, you know, there's clipping. You tune that out and it's just clean. Beautifully clean. All you see is my little pilot signal there. Of course, that's the fundamental. Very good. Let's move on. Okay, for 2 ohms, I have both of these 4 ohm loads connected in parallel. And I've been monkeying around, setting it to its highest level. And I think I got pretty much the max I can go because of the current limit on this is 3 amps RMS, the output current. Maybe a little bit more like 3.1 or something, but here we go. So we're getting about, it jumped around there, 6.29 we'll say. That was the lowest. Okay, so 6.29 squared divided by 2 ohms. 19.78. Not too bad, considering we're running in the current limit. I'm running it at plus minus 16 volts, which is 32 volts total. Because of the current limit, I can't go as high as when I had 4 ohm loads. That's why it limits the output power even though I'm running it at a lower impedance. Okay, we'll move ahead and take a look at 8 ohm loads. Alright, I've hooked up the 8 ohm load and I clamped it to the heat sink because it will get hot quick. And you know what? The maximum voltage this chip will take is 60 volts or plus and minus 30 volts. Let's let it roar, see what it does. Well, it looks like the maximum point before clipping is 18.4 volts with the 8 ohm load. 
18.4 volts RMS output. And let's plop the calculator back up here and do the math. 18.4 squared divided by 8. Look at that. We have hit 42.32 watts of clean power. 8 ohm load with the LM 1875. That chip has got a little capability to it. Awesome. Okay, I will finish up my measurements and come back with the results. And here are the results. I put it into a spreadsheet so I didn't have to do all these calculations for all this data. And these here are the two ohm results. Let me explain the columns. This is the power supply voltage, total power supply voltage. So in other words, if you see 12, it's actually plus and minus 6 volts and you know so on and so forth. Supply current, RMS output voltage, RMS output current. This is the power output. This is the total power supplied from our power supply to the amp board. And I'm not going to read through all of these. But here at plus minus 16 volts, just shy of 20 watts. So that's pretty good. Two ohm loads. Now the chips, you can see here, you hit around 3 amps. It doesn't change much as we raise the voltage. So I know we're getting to that limit, that current limit. So in actuality, you probably don't want to push it that hard. You have to remember that loudspeakers represent a reactive load to the amplifier. And you should give it a little bit of headroom, depending on your speaker. You know, some speakers are more than others. So just keep that in mind. Here are the 4 ohm results. And as you see here, we went up to plus and minus 20 volts, 40 volts total. And we got that 31.36 watts of output power. But looky here, 2.8 amps. I could have actually gone higher. I left some current on the table. You know, I might have hit 34, 35 watts. But yeah, I stopped a little short there. I could have gone up to a higher supply voltage and pushed this a little more and got more power just to see what it would have done. And finally, here is the 8 ohm results. Again, at 60 volts, we hit 42.32 watts. Very good. Now, normally power amplifiers, you don't use a regulated supply. So if you had a voltage surge on the mains, you can actually push beyond the amplifier chip's rating and damage it. So it's probably better to run it at plus minus 25 volts, or 50 total, and you'd still do pretty good. You know, you'd be under 2 amps and get 31.2 watts. Not too shabby. Well, there you have it. Now you can see why I like the LM1875 IC so much. Delivers the goods. Decent power for a simple amplifier. Very low noise, low distortion. And these kits are really wonderful. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching.